Okay, so in the last class we saw conflict directed back jumping, which is the last uh, look back algorithm that we will look at. Let us now try to combine different algorithms. So, in particular, we will try to combine look back me methods with look back methods. And the look ahead method that we will look at will be forward checking and the look back method will be conflict directed back jumping. And for good measure, we will add uh, variable selection okay, or dynamic variable ordering, because you can always add that to any algorithm without any extra cost. All it does is that it chooses a variable, which is uh, most like likely to have uh, the least number of values. Okay. Okay. So, the basic idea here will be as follows that if you start with x 1 and then you go on to x i and you are looking at values of x i and you already have a partial solution which has been constructed up to the previous variable which is a i minus 1 bar and if you are considering a value of x i is equal to a, then if you are doing look ahead, then we also look at future variables and let us say we are looking at some future variable x k and we are looking at some value x k is equal to b. Okay, so, for all the values that are there. So, if, if x k is to b is not consistent, then we do the following that we remove it from the domain d i d k prime and to we add the variables Okay, so, since we are doing conflict directed back jumping, there would be some variables in the a in the partial solution, which are a subset of a i minus 1. So, we are talking about variables, we are not talking about values here plus x i to the jump back set for k. For variable x k. Okay. So, it is a little bit different from what we did in conflict directed back jumping. In conflict directed back jumping, we constructed the jump back set, set for the variable that we are trying to instantiate. In this algorithm, which we will call as f c c b j, uh, we construct the jump back set for future variables. And when we say future variables, we will look at all future variables one by one when we are trying to instantiate a value for x i, which is like what we did in forward checking that you look at each future variable and remove values which are not consistent. But here, in addition to removing values, we will also construct the jump back sets of those algorithms. So, the jump back set, for example, uh, here uh, would be this uh, four variables one one is x i of course and the others are the three which were participating in the earliest constraint which made it inconsistent essentially so it's a simple idea of combining the two and this algorithm has turned out to be empirically one of the best algorithms for solving 
constraints. Okay, so let us look at this algorithm which we have called forward checking conflict directed back jumping and as before we start with choosing a variable, but in this case we first call the select variable function which tells us which is the next variable to select essentially. And then for all i we make a copy of the domain and we initialize here, yeah, so maybe I should write it on the top because that is the first variable that we are initializing to the empty set. And then it is mostly like conflict directed back jumping here, we get a value. So, while uh, while we are within the set of variables from 1 to n and we are looking at i is equal to 1 at this stage, we get x i as select value f c c b j and as before if this value is null, then we will need to jump back to the appropriate variable, uh, which we do by first making a uh, copy of the current index and then jumping to the latest index in j i and for the variable that we are jumping back to, we take the union of the jump back sets, the previous one and the new one and remove this variable from the jump back set and reset each d k prime which are future variables for this variable that we are looking at. So, I will just write earlier values here before we try to instantiate the previous variable essentially and else we move forward, but we select the variable that we want to move forward to. by the select variable function that we had seen. So, I should write call select variable make a copy of the domain because we are going to try out these values one by one and initialize the jump back set to empty set. So, that is the main loop as you can see it is more or less like the conflict directed back jumping this thing we are jumping back to the latest variable in the jump back set and um, the only difference here is that we are selecting the next variable that we want to select essentially. The select value function has to do a little bit more work. So, this is like Gashnik's back jumping or conflict directed back jumping, it will try to look at the partial solution incrementally trying to see whether it is consistent or not essentially. but it will do that for each future variable essentially. Okay, so, as before select a belonging to d i prime and remove it. So, we will see whether this value a from the domain of this variable x i is working. Then 
we create a flag which will tell us if some domain becomes empty. So, initially we initialize it to false, then for all future variables. So, you might add that while while the domain is false, okay, maybe we can add that check later. So, for all values b in the future variable, if not consistent the partial solution that we have constructed so far x i is equal to a and x k is equal to b. So, if it is not consistent it must be because of some constraint which is making it no, which is not being satisfied. So, we identify the variables in those constraint and add it to the jump back set for the variable x k here essentially. So, as before let r be the earliest, remember that we are working with an ordered set of constraints. And let S be scope of R. Then we add S minus XK to JK. So this is one difference from from conflict directed back jumping that we are not creating the jump back set for x i, but for x k and for each x for each each future variable essentially. So, if it is not consistent you must of course, remove v from d k prime essentially. So, once you have finished with this part of the loop you can do a check if empty domain if d k prime is empty So, if this domain has become empty then we simply said that the domain has become empty and in fact we can exit uh, and try for the next value for uh, next value for a essentially. So, maybe I should write here uh, and a condition not empty domain. So, this is a condition which is not given in Dector's textbook, but we can add it here. Okay. So, if the domain is empty then we just go and simply try the next value for uh, for the domain d i essentially. Of course, we have to reset the things. Okay, maybe that condition is already there. Okay, so, if empty domain, so that is once you have come out of all these k, this thing. So 
maybe I should write it here. So, I will just write it like this that way. Okay. Else return E. So, if you have gone through all, all the future variables, okay, let us just do the test after that. You can actually do the test in, in between, but uh, let us just stick to the book and so, so after you have gone through all the future variables. And then, if the domain is empty, then you reset all the variables uh, and try the next value of a. Uh, if empty domain is not true, then you just return the value of a. Essentially. And if you come out of the while loop, so there should be a while loop somewhere. Uh, and once you come out of the while loop, uh, then you return null. So, all the rest is same as what we did when we were doing forward checking, except that instead of simply deleting the variables, uh, values from future variables, we are also storing the set of variables which form the jump back set for the future variables essentially. Okay, so, the three differences the, the from conflict directed back jumping as we said before is that you are doing look ahead pruning future variables and at any point if any future variable becomes empty then you know that you cannot select the value for a. So, this last part of the algorithm you must carefully read for that as that when you are pruning values for future variables you create as you add to the jump back set for that variable. So, for every val every value of future variable that is being deleted, you you add some variables to its jump back set essentially. So, which is like conflict directed back jumping except it that you are doing it for future variables. And the third thing we are doing is that we are selecting the variable that we want to select next. Essentially. So, of all the algorithms that we have seen, uh, we can try to uh, arrange them in order of uh, how effective they are and we can draw a partial order between these algorithms. So, we start backtracking this one and then we have for example, Gashnik's back jumping. And the meaning of this arrow is that the search space of Gashnik's back jumping <coughs> is contained in the search space for backtracking. So, as we go down this partial order we are searching less and less of the space, uh, which means hopefully we will be finding the solution faster. But every time we are doing that at the expense of some extra work, which you must keep in mind essentially. So, 
So, the next thing is forward checking that we had seen, uh, which, which obviously see searches a smaller space in backtracking. But if you remember the relation between backtracking and forward, gas next back jumping and forward checking, we saw uh, when we were looking at this uh, n queens example that uh, gas next back jumping jumps back to that variable from which forward checking would have backtracked essentially. So, you need to go back to look at your notes and verify this fact and which means that forward checking has already uh, already backtracked from some some variable gas next back jumping may go ahead and it may jump back to that variable essentially. So, gas next back jumping is doing extra work. So, the space for forward checking is smaller than that of this thing. Then we had graph based back jumping, which cannot be compared to gas next because they are doing different things. Graph based back jumping is looking only at the graph topology, gas next back jumping is only looking at the values that were conflicting essentially. So, you know depending on the particular problem one may do more or one may less, but there is no strict order between them, but conflict directed back jumping which was a combination of gas next back jumping and graph based back jumping is smaller than both those algorithms in terms of the space that it gives you. Then in forward check, forward uh, after forward checking we had seen a series of algorithms uh, partial look ahead. So, I will just write PLO here, uh, then full look ahead PLA. full look ahead and our consistency each of them as we had seen prune more and more of the future space and therefore, they search less and less of those spaces. Then the last algorithm that we looked at was F C C B J that sees uh, searches less of the space because it does not do all that unnecessary backtracking that forward checking would have still done because it forward checking still backtracks only chronologically. Essentially. Then there is an algorithm which is better than conflict directed back jumping which is conflict directed back jumping with something called jump back learning. This is an algorithm that we have not seen and that we will see in the next class essentially. And there is another algorithm which we have not seen and which we will not even see because the only thing that this one does is that looks at i variables at a time instead of one. So, you can see that in some sense it is trying to do work which is less local than our, our local search algorithm essentially you are just taking the next variable and trying to get a value for that. I, I C B J tries to look at a set of values together and it turns out that it, it ends up looking at a smaller space essentially. Okay. So, there is as you can see a partial order between these different algorithms in terms of the amount of work, amount of space that they explore, but also as you go down this partial order the amount of work extra work that you do has to be taken into account essentially. So, for example, when you do forward checking you are looking ahead to future variables before you assign a value to the current variable and all look ahead algorithms do that extra work. All back jumping algorithms construct some kind of a marker or a set to jump back to which is extra work that they do and of course, learning that we will see next is uh, uh, trying to remember no goods. So, that 
we can identify them and not try to extend no good basically. So, we will do that in the next class.